Hey everybody, welcome back to Matt's Basement Workshop. So on today's episode, we're gonna be building this great shoe bench. What I really love about this one is it's gonna be replacing probably one of the more hideous projects that we've ever done here on the show, which was featured back in 2012. The good, the bad, it's ugly. If you remember that, it was a really, eh, well, it was a really ugly shoe rack when it came down to it. But this one has a couple of great benefits in it that we'll see. Number one is the fact that you can actually sit on this to put your shoes in place, and it takes up about the same exact location that the other one was in. Has a little bit more shoe storage versus having those little cubbies that the other one was going into. And let's be honest, this one just looks so much nicer. Again, the neat thing about this project is it's giving me an opportunity to use up some of that wood stack back there. Plus, as we'll see, there's a really beautiful contrasting walnut plywood on here, and I'll talk more about that in just a second. But again, it was just a really fun project and one that is uh, gonna really take care of an eyesore that was in the house. So without further delay, let's get into it. To get this project started, I decided to construct the bench seat from this leftover piece of walnut plywood from the walnut buffet we built back in 2011. The first step is to cut it to length. Next, we'll slide the rip fence over for the second cut, which then gives us the desired width. So I have to confess at this point, the original plan all along was to build the entire project from solid maple. But once I realized I had this piece of walnut plywood that was the perfect size for the top, and more importantly, it would actually save me time from resawing and milling more maple, I decided wrapping the walnut plywood and contrasting maple would actually make for a more beautiful design detail. So to prep the maple wrap, I had readjust the rip fence, add a feather board, and rip the pieces to slightly larger than their finished width, starting first with one of the end pieces, then moving on to the first of the long strips. After the first two strips are cut, we then readjust the feather board for the much narrower remaining strips, and then cut those pieces to their final dimension. Now with the strips ripped, it's time to move on to the glue up itself, starting first with the long edges. As I already mentioned, the wrap strips are all slightly oversized, and I'll demonstrate why this is beneficial once the top is fully assembled. But for now, I have all the show faces resting face down. This way, as I start adding the clamps in place, I'm able to adjust the plywood to make certain the strips ultimately sit just a wee bit proud of the surface. With the long strips in place, we'll cut to length and then attach the end strips, starting first by adding glue directly to the strips, trying to keep as even a coating as possible to avoid too much squeeze out. Once the first end is in place, we'll repeat everything for the opposite end, and then we'll finally clamp them in position. Now that everything is dry and the clamps are removed, I cut the long strips to length and then I turn my attention to bringing them all down to the same plane as the walnut. This step involves using my block plane, which I hold on a slight skew for easier control, and then quickly remove all that excess material, stopping frequently to feel and kind of look at that mating edge. And as we get closer, I switch back and forth between the block plane and a card scraper to help dial in that final dimension until I can feel it's right where it needs to be. Now once that's all done, I'll eventually sand everything smooth and blend away all the blemishes. The next component to build for the shoe bench are these cross legs, and to do this I opted for one of my least favorite joinery techniques, the half lap. As far as I'm concerned, half lap joinery is already complicated enough, but adding an angle to it is just asking for trouble. So in hindsight, there are far more accurate ways to achieve repeatable results for this joinery, but for this project we set our miter gauge to the correct angle, draw reference lines in the throat plate to define the outer cutting edges of the stacked dado, and because my preferred method with any half lap is to first cut both shoulders to establish the width, I start by matching the layout lines in the leg stock with the reference lines in the throat plate. Once I'm satisfied with these initial passes, I'll then start nibbling away at the rest of the remaining material. Now before moving on to the next leg, I need to check the fit, and in this situation, it's still just a pinch too tight, so 
It's back over to the dado stack for a very careful extra pass to widen the gap. Once the fit is good, I simply repeat the process on the mating piece. So the next step is to raise the stack to the final height. Then it's time to repeat the process all over again, including sneaking up on that matching existing shoulder. And did I mention that there's more accurate and easily repeatable ways to achieve this? Uh, maybe I'll do that next time. But you know, even while attempting to sneak up on the final cut, there's still just a little bit of play in this joint, but you know what, it's more than acceptable. And when placing the matching pair on top of each other, well, they're dead on. I deliberately left these leg blinks a little long with the intention of cutting them to the final length after the half lap was glued and assembled. So I set up my miter gauge to match the desired angle on the feet, and to help minimize any blowout from the cut, I even added sacrificial material to the back of each leg. After the first cut, I moved the rip fence over to the desired length, but the legs up against them, clamp more sacrificial material, and then make the final cut. Then once they're assembled and glued, they're a near perfect match. To attach the slotted shelves to the legs, we're going to need side supports. So I begin by cutting them to their rough length with my carcass saw and a bench hook. Then using a marking gauge, I scratch a reference line on both sides of the support stock to represent the desired thickness and then highlight it with a pencil. To make quick work of hogging away the material, I use my surface vise to hold the stock in place while using my scrub plane. Now it only takes a few passes before I grab my low angle plane to clean up the surface and then bring it down to the final desired dimension. So with all the supports prepped, it's time to cut them to their final length, which we'll do at the table saw. Pass one is to square up the first end. Then next we set up a stop block and I use another piece of scrap to help line everything up so I can make one big pass for cut number two which is to bring them down to their desired length. The final step for these supports is to pre-drill the screw hole and countersink for attaching them to the legs, which is made even easier over at the drill press with a reference fence and a stop lock. With everything dimensioned and pre-assembled, it's time to start bringing it all together. But before we start, I already took the time to sand everything and do a dry fit just in case. So really the only thing left to do is to actually assemble it. Using my rip fence as a reference edge for the top support, I line up the location of the top support and press the screws down into the legs so I know what they're gonna attach. I then mark them and pre-drill the holes to avoid any possible splitting. Then the only thing left to do is to drive the screws home and attach the support in place. Now one of the easiest ways to ensure the supports on both legs line up as closely as possible is to assemble one leg entirely and then use that kind of as a story stick of sorts for the second one. Again, lining everything up, I then mark them, pre-drilling, and then eventually driving the screws home and repeat all over for each of the supports. Now to attach the legs at the top, I flip it over and then I use a square to inset them to the desired dimension. Once it's in place, I use a clamp to hold it in position while I drive the screws in place. At this point, the only thing left to do is to attach the slats for the shelves. And because I always anticipate I'm going to mess up some important dimension, I opted to wait to cut the slats until I knew for certain the length I'd be needing for them. So once the legs were in position, I measured the length and then set up the table saw for a couple more cuts. Again, the first one to square one end and the second to cut the final length. To attach the supports themselves, I simply fired up my brad nailer and attached them. And here's the final look. All right, folks, and that's all there is to building this shoe bench. Probably the most nerve-wracking thing, the one I struggled with for certain the most, and I emphasize this throughout the whole process, was doing these angled half laps. 
half laps in general, just not a big fan of it. I know I mentioned that several times already. Uh, this helped to kind of reinforce it. But at the same time, it's, gave me, it's given me a lot more confidence in what I can do the next time if I ever have to incorporate one into my project. Huge advantage of this, number one is the fact that we're getting rid of that eyesore, but number two is the fact that you can actually sit on this while you're putting your shoes on, which as I get older, um, I really appreciate being able to do that. But because I have never really built too many things that you actually have to sit on, I still have to kind of come back and tweak things just a little bit. So one thing I didn't include in the build project was the fact that after I got this in place, I went ahead and actually added a support here between the two legs at the top and then also one here at the very bottom to help really make sure that structurally when I'm sitting on this and moving around, this is not gonna wobble on me. In fact, this was, I ended up adding those just before I shot the video just now uh, to have that in here and it made a world of difference. So I just simply took some scrap material, did some pocket hole joinery and put that right in position and it has really made this very, very solid. So anyway, until the next time, Straight grains and sharp blades. Take care, everybody.